And I, I just want to give hope to all of those Asian American kids, like in either your age, a little bit younger. Mm -hmm. or I, really, it's it now is the time to say, our parents mean well. They're giving us a lot of input, but in the end, it's our decision to decide how we want to live and how do we want to go and you know make our impression on the world. And nothing will stop you from doing that. Right. So, let's say we have a 18 year old kid. 19 year old kid in college bruce bruce is going to college um his parents want him to become a lawyer yep he's getting ready to um he's doing all his prerequisite classes to go to law school but he's starting to realize like that's not for him like he yeah. doesn't enjoy law he he wants to start his online business he wants to pursue entrepreneurship and uh, what, what how would that how would you have that conversation with a parent let's say like let's Let's say I'm the parent and you're Bruce. How would you like kind of bring up that topic? Oh yeah, I, I, I had to do this with my parents, right? right. Um, so, but I, I recall this very clearly. I mean, it was basically over the phone. Yeah. Um, I wasn't at home at the time. And I called him up and I said, "Hey, you know, I'm going to finish up my major because I'm so close, and I really just want to get the degree. But I've decided for my career, here's what I'm going to do." Right. Um, and so, in you know the scenario you did. But say, look, I, I know how valuable and how important it was for me to become a lawyer in your mind. But, you know, I, I've wrestled with it and it's just not something that I feel like um, would fulfill me. I, I don't think I'd be a very happy human being. And therefore, I don't think I would be a particularly good lawyer. And people are going to be paying me good money and entrusting their livelihood their, and their their success or failure in a court or, you know, whatever claims that they're in to me. And. I want to make sure I do a good job and I can't do that if I'm not 100% committed myself, right? And right. then I would also just mentally prepare, right? Um, I'm going to get a negative reaction and that yeah, I'm prepared to say, okay, you know, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I've made my decision. This is how I'm going to roll. And you got to be willing to walk, right? Like I think a lot of the times is when kids get into this thing where they want to do something but then they also expect their parents to continue to financially support them, right? right? And I think the right thing to do is to say, well, if this is the path I want to do, and my parents are saying the condition of me continuing to fund you um, is that you do what I want you to do, then you got to be able to walk away from it all, right? You can't sort of go back to your parents like, well, yeah, I still want you to continue to pay my rent while I try to figure out this thing that I'm doing. Like, it'd be nice p if parents would do that. And honestly, I hope that I become that parent. That if, you know, my son comes to me with a great idea and he's like, but I need to have something to pay the bills and, you know, put a roof over my top that I can continue to do that. But if for some parents, they just don't want to do it, you as the individual need to be able to say, okay, that's fine. I'm on my own, right? You're 18, 19, 20, whatever it is, right? I'm going to go out make sure I can get my bills covered and then I'm going to chase my dream and be okay with that. Right. Um, so I think as long as you are mentally prepared to say, I'm going to lose my support system, right? Financially, whatever. Uh, but in exchange for that, I get my freedom, so to speak, to go and pursue what I feel is going to be more meaningful for me. I think it's well worth it. I mean, right. Yeah. You know, I think this is something Gary V talks about all the time. Like, like if you're yeah, going to go drop out of college and then don't, don't expect your parents to give you anything. Don't, ex exactly. don't expect your parents to pay for your rent. Don't expect them to pay for your, uh, your college, fund your business. Like that's not their responsibility anymore. That's exactly. It'd be nice yeah. if parents would do that, but yeah. you know, the truth is you got to look at it as any other business transaction, right? Like right. if I'm working right now and I go to my boss and say, Hey, unless you let me take on that role, <laughs> uh, and I want you to continue to pay me, I, Look, right. I mean, yeah. he has a choice to make. He could say, mm, no, right? Yeah. Get out. And if I do, fine. I get out and I go chase my own thing, right? right? So I think if, you know, that's where some of the conflict is, right? Like the more you say uh, as a younger person, oh, but, you know, I really still need my mom and dad to like pay for X, Y, and Z. Well, you're handing power over to them, right? You are giving them the ability to apply that kind of leverage over you. If you really want true freedom, then you got to find a way to go out there and make your own, right? Make your own money, get your own house. There's, you just have to embrace everything that comes with entrepreneurialism, right? Right. And this is step one. Like, there's a risk in this, but I can see the 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 honeypot at the end of this, the pot of gold, 
and I'm willing to go for it. And that means, well, if mom and dad aren't going to send me the $2,000 a month or whatever I need to live, I'm okay with that. Right. And I think it's such an important lesson because as you really start getting to building your own business, you're going to face a decision time and time again, right? I'm going to choose X. I'm going to alienate all these people on this side. They're not going to give me money anymore, but I still feel in my heart, this is what I need to do. Are you willing to do it or not? So right. I think if you as the younger entrepreneur can sort of get around that, then I think you're good. But I, I think it, for us as Asian Americans, it's much more deeply rooted because there is this, you know, honoring your parents' wishes um, right. sort of um, philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times- It comes down um, to the Western and Asian culture classing. Exactly. Very, very sensitive topic because like, like this culture, right. Asian culture is very different. And literally it's just, it's only been one generation translation into Western culture. So it's kind of like two cultures clashing and it's just a very sensitive topic. It, it is. And, you know, I, I think the, the thing is, but we're here. Right. Right. We're not back in Vietnam. We're not back in China. We're not back in Taiwan. And so, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? Like you right. have to play by the rules that are going to make you successful here. But I mean, I think it's more psychological than that. Cause like, you know, from a mm -hmm. very young age, right? You're taught your parents' wishes are the most important thing. And right. a lot of ways, right? Like my parents wanted me to be a doctor. Like that was their dream, right? That was what they had hoped they could have accomplished. They didn't. And so they're like, well, I got you to America. You've got all of these opportunities. You should become a doctor. And they, you know, they just don't have it in their cultural wiring to say, wow, like you're, you're, you're kind of imposing what you want onto another human being, right? You just, they came from you, we get it, but that's another human being with their individual thoughts, wants, desires. That individuality uh, that Western society values so much is really what's different. And the, the point of conflict for a lot of Asian American families is parents from that first generation, like individuality just isn't that value, right? Like in, it's where they were brought up, right? Communism right. and, you know, all the, the whole cultural context behind there was to suppress individuality. You want everybody to be the same, right? You want everybody to have the same thoughts. So, you know, as the kids in this generation or the ones that are dealing with the parents, like we just have to recognize that's sort of the, the mental jail that they're in, right? And the last thing you want to do is to get pulled into that jail and now you suffer the same fate as them. And so you have to walk away. And sure. I think as parents, and I certainly can speak for myself, right? I'm evolving as a parent. Mm -hmm. When you see your kids starting to move away from what you traditionally thought as the right thing to do, as uh, success, it's hard because it's so different than what you internally wired it to be. But when you see the smile, when you see the joy that's genuine, you soften. As a parent, you, you, you soften. Like you just say, you know what? Maybe I was wrong. Right. And I'm never going to get an apology out of my mom or dad. Like this just will never happen. I don't expect yeah. it. Um, but I'm, you know, glad that they're able to see, okay, you know, he chose a different path and he's probably making a better living than he did if he would have become a doctor. So I think that's the tough part. It's always disappointing someone that, you know, especially for Asian Americans, it's really hard to accept. Mm -hmm. but once you get over it, it really isn't that hard. Like you just got to be willing to walk away and it's only temporary because I think, with time, as you had pointed out, your parents will open up and say, okay, I'd rather be able to talk to my son than to beat this thing over his head that I might've been wrong with to begin with, right? So, I mean, that's my thought. I mean, I really think it's just getting over that mentality of pleasing your parents right. um, for you to be able to feel confident in doing what you want to do. Right, I couldn't agree more. I mean, just to point out that one thing, that very key point, like, your parents will come back around. Like your parents love you. And at the end of the day, if you're happy, um, as, an, as a parent, I'm sure like if your kid is happy, Andy, like that's that's all you can really ask for. Like if your kid is happy, you're happy. And like, if they like- yeah, Exactly, you know exactly. Doing, then like, I'd rather see my kid like love what he's doing, making 70K a year than like making 200K a year, just depressed, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah. And, yeah. Um, I mean, and you know, honestly, if the parent doesn't ever come around, then you gotta ask yourself, right? Like, is the problem with you or your parents? Right. And you have to be confident enough to know, well, that's your parents, right? And right. I mean, 
this is going to sound like totally sacrilegious and heresy, but uh, it's a philosophy I've developed over time, which is terms like parents, family, brothers and sisters, friends, BFFs, whatever you want to call them, right? Right. Those are just words. Um, you know, it's how those people behave in good and bad when they agree with you and disagree with you that really define who's quote unquote family. Right. Um, and so if you can sort of adopt that philosophy and realize that it is lonely at the top, the higher you climb, you know, the, the more you are achieving your dreams and the rest of the people are sort of settling, the more the people are going to want to drag you down. It's just, I don't know why it is, but it's just that, right? And so if you get to that point and your parents aren't coming along with you and they prefer to stay down there, you got to be comfortable with that. It, it just is what it is, right? I mean, it doesn't mean you don't go home and, you know, visit and do your duties as a son or a child, but don't expect anything in return, right? Like just give and whatever they return, they return. And if they don't, they don't. And I know it's easier said than done, but honestly, it's the most liberating sort of framework uh, to live with if you're dealing with these conflicts of people in your life that you, know, you really looked up to when you were younger that are now becoming a drag. And you just have to be able to step, step above it and say, okay, I hope you can come with me, but if you don't want to, I get it. I'm going to keep moving on. Yeah, that it just comes down to taking the power That's right. for yourself. Like you control how... Um, you view yourself and you kind of just step away from letting others influence you and like how you view yourself. I think yeah. that's really important. Like once you yeah. kind of step away from that and stop allowing other people's opinions, whether it's your mom, yeah. dad, your friends, like it's just like Andy said, like one of the most powerful feelings ever. Like it, it is. And it'll carry you far for all your, all your career. And so I think we talked a lot today about sort of that mindset, right. In terms right. of, um, the typical, you know, somewhat stereotypical, obviously everybody's different, but the stereotypical Asian American mindset that we were programmed with by our parents, by our grandparents, by our aunts, uncles, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then I think the, the other aspect of it is the skills that we don't get encouraged to develop that, let's say, our Western friends we're encouraged to develop as children, right? Um, yeah, th those are those are some things. We about talk about. Yeah, we should talk about that yeah. in a in a future uh, right. show because I, I think those are the skills that, as we entered the workforce, we're behind, right? Yeah. So a lot of times, I think there's a lot of focus on um, you know equality in the workplace, and uh, don't get me wrong, there's definitely racism and discrimination out there in the world. But by and large, if you're working for a reputable business that legitimately wants to make money, there is no reason why uh, they would discriminate based on race. Because if you're helping them bring revenue, if you're helping them deliver a service more effectively, right? Be foolish for them, right? To right. discriminate against that. But you know, you have to retrospect a bit and say, well, what am I not doing as well as maybe some of my colleagues? And you know, this comes in the form of many things. Like I think it's communications. I think it's in saying no. Uh, I think it's very, very difficult for a lot of Asian Americans to say no. Uh, and the reason why we're, we have a difficult time saying no is we're taught to avoid conflict. Right. Like, conflict is not something that you know we say, "Hey, go and, and work it out, hash it out." Um, you know, t very much to your point about your parents not encouraging you to play basketball. I think team athletics has such an impact on your ability to succeed in the business world. And uh, again, it's not something that a lot of Asian Americans uh, tend to encourage right. their kids to do. Like yeah, they'll encourage their kids to play things like tennis or um, golf, right? Or something that's more individual, right. play a lot of musical instruments, right? Like I don't know what you right. were forced to play, but I'm sure you nah, were forced to play piano, not. <laughs> violin, right? But you know, none of those teach you one of the most important things you need to do in business, which is, how do you relate to people, right? right. Uh, I think Alex Becker had this really, really, really good uh, video on YouTube where he talks about when you're trying to establish a business and you're trying to get clients, like he calls it RTR, you have to be able to establish respect, trust, and rapport. I think as Asian Americans, the way we were brought up, it's very difficult for us to hit any of those. 
uh, mm -hmm. without rewiring your head, without getting your mindset right, and then questioning certain beliefs that we have because that's what we were taught when we were kids, throwing them out the window and saying, okay, here's how everybody who is successful doing it and then making that a part of our being. Right. So get into that a bit because I, I think the, the, the barriers, the, I don't want to call it damage because I think that's such an overused word, but the barriers or the incorrect wiring that our parents did with our minds um, can often get in the way of being successful in the corporate environment or an entrepreneurial environment. Right. right? Yeah. I can't so agree. I, I think we should like, definitely talk about that more. Yeah, because we'll definitely like talk about that in another video, but just to like highlight some of the points and kind of give you guys something to take away. Like, I feel like Asian Americans, we were like, built, like grew up to like kind of your voice doesn't matter. Like just stay, be comfortable. Don't try and get out of your comfort zone. You know, like, don't say what your mind wants you to say. Um, just follow the norm and kind of just do as you're told. And like overall, like when you're growing up as an Asian American, you kind of lose out on those communication skills like Andy was talking about, which are just so valuable in like entrepreneurship. I know when I was like, before I became like an entrepreneur, before I started getting clients and like just starting my different businesses and working with people, building relationships, like I'll just say this, relationships are so valuable. Like me and Andy met over Instagram and that's all right. just based on like networking and like building relationships. And I feel like before I did all this stuff, I was like in a bubble, you know, I just wasn't as confident. Um, I wasn't like out as outspoken and like I wasn't as good as with people. My social skills weren't that great. But as soon as like I took the leap, like I was horrible in the beginning. Like when I started cold calling, I would be mumbling, stuttering. Like, how are you doing today, sir? Like, I wouldn't know what to say, but like, as you kind of just go in and take that leap of faith, like your skills just start building. It's just a matter of like, you rewind your brain saying, listen, so this is, this is where I am now. So I want to be, this is who I want to be like, and kind of just working towards that. And I feel like as soon as you kind of rewire your brain and recognize the skills that you need to develop to, in order to be successful, then that's when the game just completely changes. You yeah. Just, it, it, like it's so Cause I remember how persistent you were following up with me, right. I was like, man, who is this kid? I mean, like he's 18. You could tell you were young, right? right. But, you know, you were persistent, you were professional. And eventually I was like, you know what? Let's, let, let's uh, communicate. Let's talk. And I was just so impressed from the first minute I talked to you. And clearly you've done a lot of the rewiring um, that you needed to do. Cause I, right. I think most Asian Americans, right? Like, especially at your age, cause I was certainly that way. Like we have, a complete misunderstanding of leadership, right? Leadership is something that, you know, we, my parents taught me were tied to titles, right? And they were tied to the ability to control and tell people what to do, right? Which hopefully, as you probably know, I'm like, that's the furthest thing from what right. leadership actually is. And again, that's, I think, something you right. learn from heavy, heavy team athletics, where right. not everybody can be the quarterback, but the quarterback isn't always a leader on the team, right? Um, so I think, that, I think communications, I think um, the way our parents were wired and therefore that's the way they wired us was to be good workers, right? Like that is what the economy in Vietnam and in China and to a lesser degree, Taiwan and Hong yeah. Kong, but still pretty strong, like be a good worker, right? right. You're a and good I, worker. You're on the assembly line. Like, exactly. Sure you get that t-shirt right like exactly every single time, same way every single time don't mess up that t-shirt right like, be a good worker over and over again but there's never anything that was where i was like well how do you become the owner right. right and then study that owner and say well he looks like he's successful with these 500 factories that you know churning out x number of products and making all this money but like how many failures did he have leading up to that how many times did he get his ass kicked right from his wife, from his parents or her parents, right? Like all of the different things that led up to the point, nobody ever knows about that, right? And so right. you don't study that, you're, st you're, you're, you're wired to be a good worker. And that's unfortunately what has translated into a lot of Asian Americans and it's pervasive. I mean, I would say in general, our public education system is building kids to be good workers, right? No one teaches entrepreneurialism in school. You can go get an MBA and you're not really gonna learn a lot of the stuff that you get working in directly in the field and pursuing your own business ventures. So right. 
you know, I, I think all of that stuff is really interesting topics that we should double click on uh, in, in, a, in a future video set because I really mm -hmm. want to help, you know, the next 16, 17, 18 year old, you know, the 16 or 17 year olds who are thinking about, man, should I even go to college or not? Right. And so, I mean, I'll just kind of end my PR part of this with the advice I'm giving my kids is I want the, my kids to have the ability to go to college if they choose to. Right. Mm -hmm. What I don't want is them to be in a point where they want to go to college, but they didn't have the grades and all the check boxes that you need. But if they come to me and say, look, I got into whatever college, but I really don't want to. Here's what I want to go pursue. I'm prepared to say I'm good with that. Um, so I would love to kind of share with sort of the, the sub 18 year olds who are you know on that cusp. Like, do I go to college or not? Right. As well as the ones that are like you right? like 18, you're on your college journey, you're going to graduate. Right. What do you want to do next? Right. right. Um, and, and as Asian Americans, I think there's just a lot of um, internal conversations we're having all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And how do you put a light on it, talk about it so they're no longer controlling you, that you kind of free yourself from these doubts and, you know, the things that, you know, you wonder like, well, or am I going to be ostracized from the family? Uh, yeah, you might, but who cares, right? Like just, I think the ability to have that dialogue and put it out there is such a freeing and empowering experience. I want to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to experience it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Anything All right. else, Elvin? No, I think that covers a lot of what we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was as always a pleasure and, yeah, uh, pleasure. We'll, we'll get one, uh, we'll get the next one rolled out in a couple of weeks. All right. Sounds All right. good. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys. All right. All right. Bye. -bye.